This Pitch Breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins, attorneys for Charlotte's startup community. Hello, my name is Aaron Paranak, founder of Hoops College. After 18 years of coaching college basketball, I decided to do something different and try to have a greater impact on the game and the players who play it. Hoops College is looking for an investment of $100,000 to help develop our custom content for our courses and market our platform. To help you understand the problem we're trying to solve, I'd like to tell you a story. Meet Jonathan, 10-year-old basketball player, wants to play in the NBA, favorite player, Steph Curry. He's always in the driveway working on his game. Mom, Dad, please come rebound, please. Mom and Dad are like, man, I'm tired. I gotta find him a trainer. So they, they find a trainer, $3,000 for this trainer. They send him to basketball camps for $2,000. That's $5,000 for training in camp. When he's at camp, he hears about this AAU thing. AAU is how you get recruited. This is how you go to college. Mom, I got to play AAU so I can go to college and play in the NBA. So they find an AAU team, pay $3,000 a season for that. For the next three years, Jonathan's family has spent $24,000 for Jonathan's dream to play in college. It's crazy, isn't it? So now he's in high school. Oh, by the way, wait a minute. Nobody gets recruited at 10 or 12 years old. Just saying. So now he's 13. He's got to play in team camps with his high school team. He's going to get more training. He's got a personal strength and conditioning coach to help him with that area as well. Now he's playing AAU nationally because you've got to go to Las Vegas every year to play in the big exposure tournament. Jonathan's on his way home from an AAU tournament, and one of his friends lets everybody know on Instagram that he just got an offer from a Division I school. Why don't I have an offer? I haven't talked to a coach yet. What's going on? says, well, I can switch AAU teams, or maybe I just get a recruiting service. Maybe that'll fix the problem. So he spends $1,000 a year on a recruiting service that's going to send a million emails out to a million coaches, just like every other recruiting service out there, marketing every other player in the United States internationally. So by the time Jonathan's a senior in high school, his family could have easily spent $100,000 on his college recruitment. Is that going to pay for a college education anywhere? Probably so. Meanwhile, he wants to play college basketball. He attends an individual showcase. Um, the spring of his senior year, and he sees a coach who gives him a full scholarship. He's excited, right? We just spent all this time, all this money, traveling, camps, clinics, all this stuff. I'm finally going to play in college. So he gets to college. That slide came too early. He gets to college, and he's playing, but he's not really playing. The team's terrible. His coach gets fired. The new coach comes in, and the coach signs a transfer that plays his position. Now what's he going to do? Does he transfer and just waste the $100,000 he just spent trying to get there? Or, so he can play, or does he try to stick it out? Maybe earn a little bit of playing time this senior year. This is a problem that happens all over the time. Maybe people don't spend that much money, but the headache and the stress of going through it is definitely worth that much. If he works with Hoops College, he doesn't spend $20,000 those first three years. Probably because he doesn't play AU and he can do training online. And during his high school years, he's saving at least $10,000 a year just because he's making different decisions. Not because anybody's values um, costs any more or less. Along the way, he understands the recruiting process. He has multiple offers. He makes a decision that he understands is the best fit for him. Then he enjoys his four-year career in college. He doesn't worry about having to transfer. And he, maybe he gets to play with $60,000 left to pay for grad school, maybe. So we think at Hoops College that if you can get a business degree online, why can't you learn basketball online as well? So Hoops College is a one-stop shop for anything basketball related for players or coaches. We have an online course curriculum so players can improve in any area they wish. We offer recruiting courses to help guide players and parents through the recruiting process so it's not some messy thing that they have to experience. We teach them how to brand themselves as an athlete. We offer evaluations for them to, so that they understand how they're progressing. We give them personalized game plans that are not just, hey, get yourself recruited, but how do you want to get recruited for what you're looking for? This stuff can be purchased individually or with a, or with a subscription. I've coached and played the game because I enjoyed it. But basketball is a business. It's not a game. <clears throat> Billions of dollars are spent every year in youth sports. The NBA is a $30 billion venture. The NCAA brings in a billion dollars of revenue, not to mention all the scholarships that are out there. We believe that we can help players save money and have a better experience. Because as you can see, a free education is not really a free education, is it? Thank you. Um, thanks for that. That was that was great. So.
couple things. One is very good opener, right? You kind of said, here's what I'm here to do. Um, so it was very clear. The, the only feedback I'd give you on the kind of the high level, like construction and use of time is the story was a great way to get me engaged. You spend, I was looking at the clock, uh, and just you know, kind of like with sports, you spend 60% <coughs> of your usable time yeah. on the story, right? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how you cut the story down, but that's where I'd start, right? That's, and it's, that was my struggle was how yeah, do I? Five to 10 minute formats, <coughs> the story could take 80% of the time. Um, and then you know, at a minute left, literally like exactly one minute left on the clock, you're basically <coughs> kind of selling your, really the vision on the product. So. I'd say the balance should probably be more like 30% story, just to kind of set yeah. the hook, maybe 40 tops, and just explain like, families are gonna spend a lot of money on this. Like I actually have two sons, one loves hoops, like I don't know how much we're gonna spend, but yeah, it's gonna be a lot. Um, so you don't have to really quantify okay. it. Um, okay. And then the other thing would be the, you know, you kind of accelerate through, it's almost like you're kind of coaching a team, right? So like you accelerated in terms of intensity and speed of mm -hmm. presentation. Um, and that's, you know, that's dangerous because if, if you can start to lose me halfway into your story and then you just kind of speed through the other details and get kind of more, you know, more emphatic about it and faster, it's going to be harder for me to retain the critical stuff. Okay. So just as a, like a, more of a, a technique, like think about like as if you start fast, that's not a bad thing, but slowing down is really going to okay. pull people in more. Okay. So rather than kind of accelerate, like what you might do in a locker room or on a bench <laughs> coaching kids, you probably want to kind of decelerate because the average investor and or strategic partner is really starting to kind of mostly check out if they right. don't get those boxes okay. checked. Sure. So that's just kind of high level stuff. Um, specifically, I would wrap more with either visualizations of like what you're trying to present in the product. Um, so even if you don't have it designed yet, like try to get something a little bit more visual, right? Like okay. I said, the last presenter, um, there were a lot of words on a, on a screen up there that I just couldn't see. So I was like, all right, you know, how far along is he on visualizing this thing? Because that actually allows me to risk adjust. You know, are you 10%, you know, there on the product or are you 80% there? Which is going to be pretty critical for someone in an early stage kind of seed environment to say like, yeah, like I kind of hear what you're saying conceptually then the next conversations are going to be around like, who's going to help you achieve that vision from a product point of view. Mm -hmm. It's probably not you. Right. Um, and so that would be kind of where the, where the pitch goes next. But in terms of introducing the concept and the idea, you, you were really good at getting us engaged. And then it kind of started to kind of, you know, you, you sped up and my attention level started to go down. So okay. um, that's kind of the high level. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I, 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 I think on the problem definition, I wrote exactly the same thing down that Mark did, right? That that piece, you needed to shorten that, get that a little bit more succinct around the problem definition. Mm -hmm. And I know you were trying to build it up to say, okay, I got this wonderful problem and here's my solution. <coughs> but the way, the way it came across is I spent a lot of time on the, on the problem and then when you got into the solution, it wasn't really 100% yeah. clear what the, the solution was. So um, the... Um, the other, the other big part of this is, again, you talked about all the spend and kind of that whole ecosystem that's built around sort of athletes and so forth. Um, and again, it w wasn't really clear to me where you were fitting in that ecosystem and what part of that problem your platform actually solved. Um, you, you also got in, and this one surprised me a little bit, is, it, is uh, you know, probably midway through the presentation, we were, it was basketball only, uh, you know, because one of the things that just popped into my head is, okay, how, the size of market, right, how many athletes are there, and then you, I went from the universe of all, all potential college athletes down to only basketball athletes, right, and, you know, you right. only get five starters, right, they're, they're, those teams, so you, you kind of shrank the market dramatically, and I was a little surprised by that. Um, so, uh, and I'll, I'll do the, on, on your, the slides, so when you got in, into, the, uh, into the slide where you were talking about you, you, you were a one-stop shop, so I really liked that you were saying it was a one-stop shop, but then the rest of the information, even, even with my cheaters on here, the rest of the information was like microfish. You guys aren't old enough to remember what microfish is, are you? But really, really small print, right, which I couldn't read. So right. it, again, um, it was around kind of where does the product fit, and, um, uh, and then the other thing, again, being, being the economist in the room, right, um, was the market size statistics you gave were, uh, were, were kind of generic, right? They were, they were about the dollar spent on college uh, and college athletics, and I get that, but really your market, right, is the players and the parents of the players, 
right? Um, and I, I presume that, mm -hmm. right? Because um, you're selling to them, right? Partially, yes. Or, or college players or college coaches or right. I mean, it's so, theoretically so, anybody, but so, yes. So rather than generic kind of here's the big market, right? Because everybody does this and whenever I get a pitch like this, it just sort of ticks me off, right? I don't really care that much about size of market. Everybody does a size of market size, but I want to know, okay, what would have been more relevant for me is how many college athletes are there? How many, uh, how many basketball college athletes, which is your target market, what, is that, what does that look like, right? And then, and then the other piece is, how am I going to get to them, right? Am I getting them? Am I pitching to coaches to say, here's a platform that can help you work with those? You know, again, how, what was your kind of go-to-market strategy? And I'm, I'm throwing a lot out here, but we're on the clock, too, so right. I'm just I'm getting it all out. So um, go ahead. Yeah, one more thing I forgot to say. This, I've actually said this a few times over the past, whatever, four or five years, is if you're going to say, I want $100,000, you have to come back to what that gets. Like, so even if it's an abstracted like milestone, like, hey, $100,000 gets me 10 months or 12 months of runway, which allows me to test the following three ideas or two ideas or one idea, I don't, I don't care. But ultimately, I know that idea and what you're testing is going to shift and it's going to get it's going to evolve. But that's that's part of being an entrepreneur is like, mm -hmm. I'm here to test something. So the concept of like, Build, you know, build, test, learn, optimize, right? This, whether you call it agile method or bit low, whatever it is, like you got to tell me what you're going to do with the money, okay. or you can specifically say, like, hey, there's a slide, hundred thousand dollars, like twenty thousand on research, fifty thousand on a developer and a designer, and thirty thousand on me. Like, you just have to show someone. That's not just you; it's going to anyone in the room. A lot of times, people will just kind of say, yeah, I'm here raising five hundred. You have to close it out, and because that, that's a huge credibility factor when asking for money. So. Should have said that front. And, and one last little bit of coaching on that, the raising money, right? So you're saying 100 cent, okay? One of the rules of thumb is any investor at an early stage, right, they're going to look for how do I get at least a 10x return on that 100K? So you've got to give them a little bit of idea of uh, that you can actually generate enough revenue through your platform where you could actually make that type of return that would justify uh, a 10x return on that 100K investment. Audience, what questions do you have? Anything about basketball analytics? Do you guys do anything like that? No, we're not. And the idea is <clears throat> to take it to other sports. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I don't know anything about basketball. So I'd have to find somebody who knows about football or soccer or baseball or volleyball or whatever. But it's the, the idea is let's generate a structure for basketball and then multiply that to other sports. So eventually that's, that's just my expertise in basketball. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, so else. I, I would, I would write, write, rewrite your pitch and say, I think there are whatever, so many hundred thousand kids under the age of, or between ages of eight and 12, I want to target eight to 12 year olds, I want to target their parents, I need a hundred thousand dollars, here's how I'm going to use it. Okay. Then and, like, right. that's your five minutes. You can come back to that story in the 30 minute meeting at that point, or hour meeting if I'm like, I totally get it. Like, I got kids, like I'd, okay. I'd be into that. Um, but tell the story like once you get me kind of one level down and, and hooked. Okay. There's all sorts of competition. The recruiting services are part of the competition. There are trainers everywhere that are part of the competition. And what we're, what we're trying to say is we're going to solve all those issues in one in one place. So. South Carolina is going to be the same thing for basketball. Only they have a few extra services involved. Yeah, I can find it for you. I don't have a name on it. That's fine. That's fine. So you have to name it. Cool. Um, I have a lot of experience in this space with investment. I mean, that's good investment. But um, the first thing you want to reach out to is Wayne Odom. He's a score match. Uh, but uh, the other thing you got to tap on the recruiting side is, and you're a coach, you get spanned by all these people. So mm -hmm. it's figuring out a targeted way to really provide value to that. Right. Well, it's, I think a lot of the recruiting struggle with that. Correct. And the, to me, the idea is empower the player and the, and, the, and the parents. Not You don't need to hear from a recruiting service. You need to hear directly from the parent and the player, but there's a right way to do that because how many emails get sent with grammar errors or spelling errors or they don't or say it's proud mom, proud dad, not Jonathan, right? So to me, it's more about educating the player so that they can do it themselves as opposed to a recruiting service magically solving all their problems for them. That's... That's that's my that's my theory. So. All right, Aaron Thank you. Thank you.